Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and today I got Kara with me and this is our second installment which is the 2022. We got six classes coming. Mm -hmm. This is the first one and we got chili, we got red eye gravy, we got country simmered vegetables, Tequila Sunrise, mm -hmm. Salsa Patties, Cheesecake. We got a bunch of cool stuff for y'all. So y'all hang on. Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens. That's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. People live like they did long ago So join the fun, live off the land Cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man Top line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline Waiting for the sun to shine Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens That's how we live, and it sure feels fine All right, y'all, this is pretty cool. Let me introduce my co-chef with me. Her name is? Kara Erickson. And you from? I am originally from Winfield, Louisiana, up in the north part of the boot. And I've been down here for 23 years. Now, so I'm, I'm an honorary. Yeah. I'm honorary. What yeah. they call it, uh, you've been red tagged? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> do they cook a lot of chili where you were from? They do. They do. They do. Um, chili is a big thing. You know, there was actually more chili than gumbo, I think, because it does get a little cooler up there. So gotcha. There's more opportunities. Right, right. And, the, and the, gumbo, the gumbo is good. It's just not the same. So we kind of go with the chili, you know. Well, we've been doing some research on chili, me and my wife, Leslie, and I've been eating chili for about six months straight. Oh, my. Well, maybe not six months. <laughs> maybe about a week or two, but we've come up with three really good ones. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the ones we like is the one we're cooking now. It's a classic chili recipe. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's got a bunch of things, and I'm not going to bore you with all the stuff here yet as we get going on here. Yep. Um, now, a lot of things people wonder about is uh, what do you eat with chili? Now, I grew up eating chili, I guess, basically on hot dogs. Okay. And then when we ate chili in the winter, mm -hmm. it was with crackers. Yes, soda now, crackers. When I got married, I went to Santa Mall, and they eat it on rice. And I've okay. become to really dig eating it on rice. I don't think I've ever had it on rice. It's something. It's okay. really, it's, um, it's got the beans in it. It's got all the stuff yeah. you need in it, yeah. you know. Just over rice. Exactly. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit um, about chili. Um, chili is also known as chili con corny. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's called chili. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, chili with meat is what that really says. Chili con carne. The carne, yeah. It's a spicy stew containing chili pepper, sometimes in the form of chili powder, meat, usually beef, tomatoes, and often kidney beans. Mm -hmm. This recipe does have kidney beans, red and light, or just red kidney beans on this one. Okay. Um, give you a little history. The writings from 1529. Now I don't remember that. No, nah, was that was a couple days before I was born. Describe chili pepper season stew being consumed by the Aztecs. Mm -hmm. um, the word chili con carne is first recorded in a book in 1857. Okay. Some additions are grated cheese, diced onion, sour cream, saltine crackers, tortilla chips, corn chips, cornbread, mm -hmm. flour tortilla served over rice or pasta. The first uh, chili produced was in 1908, uh, Wolf Chili developed 
in uh, 1895 mm -hmm. first canned in 1921 okay um the guy who, this is funny stuff, the guy who named the wolf chilies, Lynn Davis, and he had a pet wolf called Kaiser Bill. Oh, and goodness. he named his chili up as wolf. Okay. <laughs> if that ain't all Why things he crazy. Wolf instead of Kaiser Bill chili. I know. Yeah, something. yeah we've been buying that now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so what you got going on the recipe? Uh, so I got just some onions. Uh, it's just a medium yellow diced onion and I just kind of sweated it down and I got some 90% lean ground beef sauteing in there. I didn't put any butter or any kind of oil in the pan because there's still a little bit of grease in the meat. So it's right. Gonna, and we're just kind of breaking that up into smaller chunks and sauteing that down. And then we're going to add the spices once these get sauteed down a little bit. We got some chili powder, some cumin, some things to give it some, some aromatics. We got a bunch of things going on It's going to be here. smelling nice in here. <laughs> Well, I tell y'all what, y'all hang on. We're going to get this going, get all the stuff in, and we're going to taste some chili. All right, y'all, we got all the ingredients in there now, mm -hmm. and, and this is the classic chili. And on our website, you can get the other two recipes that we made, and the folks are out there tasting some of that now. My wife's mom, Kathy, mm -hmm. used to make a mean chili. That's one of them also. Okay. So there's a little variety in chilies right there. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you. Yeah. I'm When's the last time you had one of these right here? <laughs> so some of the things that people do, you know, as far as chili, um, they eat it on rice, like I said. Um, chili mac, where you can make uh, any type of noodles, mm -hmm. but we used a macaroni. macaroni and cheese in the box. So okay. you can do it from homemade also. Okay. There's a uh, chili nachos. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, chili on rice. Now, I can't wait for you to taste this one because oh, okay. we're leaning into some cool stuff here. Yeah. You can do a chili burger. You can have hot dogs and chili, which mm -hmm. probably most people eat it that way. And that's what I like to call Frito Pie. Well, it's, 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 it's almost Frito Pie. I'm being a little adventurous. I think you had on your list that some people eat peanuts and cucumbers on chili, and I'm, I'm on So fire. we've added the cucumbers and the peanuts to hers. Mm -hmm. Some of them will put pork skins in it, sour cream, lime, jalapenos. It's whatever you like in your chili. So undoubtedly, anything you can find in the house, you can put with your chili. All right, so well, we're gonna. You going for it? I'm gonna look. I'm gonna try to get a little piece of uh, cucumber. Yeah, yeah. On there. I've been eating chili so for gotta... a while, so I'm not gonna eat a lot. Mm. But a good chili, Ooh. though, is it's just hard. To, it's just hard to um, look at that. There we go. Mm -hmm. It was hidden. Uh, look, I'm. T well, I was just so. You had a little cucumbers. I'm well, just, the peanuts is the one that I'm, you know I'm thinking about. <laughs> okay, there's a now she's going to be tasting the freedom. Last time I had a Frito pie, I was probably about 11 years old with the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you if they hit a foul ball and mm -hmm. you can go catch the ball and bring it back at the concession stand, they'd give you a Coke or a Frito pie or something. I probably ate too many chili Frito pies as a kid. And well, the peanuts and the cucumber. It's well, you can't really taste the peanuts. If I'd have put 16 jalapenos in there. Well, then we would have had a problem. I'd have to leave the set. But the, the cucumbers are actually not bad. They kind of give it like a bright, like a brightness. Maybe that's um, what sour cream lime. does, too, Maybe or something. Squeeze some lime. I don't something. know. <laughs> All right, y'all. We got plenty know. chili. We got something coming up next. It's a homemade, large chunk smothered vegetables my mom used to make. So hang on. We're doing that next. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com The new completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. 
Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans style press po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're, You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all, we back. Man, we've been cooking some cool I know, stuff. I know, I'm sweating. Ah, ah, it's hot in the kitchen. It is. I should get out. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. All right, y'all, salmon patties. All right, I'm going to let you get started while I'm okay. talking about it, which um, we have 16 ounces of boneless, skinless, boneless, boneless salmon. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, Star Kiss made that for us. Yep. That was so you got to drain all the juice or oil out of it. Yep. And you're putting... I'm going to put in some mayo. So this is two tablespoons of mayo. We're going to put that in. Woohoo! Yep. And we are going to put in some breadcrumbs to kind of bind it together. So if you think about meat, you know, it doesn't naturally want to stay together. So you want to put something in there to bind it. So we have an egg as a binder and we have breadcrumbs as a binder. So we're going to slide that in there as well. And we got an egg here and I kind of beat it up a little bit. That way you don't have to try to beat it when it's in the, the salmon. 225 on your grease. All right. Moving right along Sounds on like the grease. I'm, and I'm just going to kind of incorporate this just a little bit. So salmon patties mm -hmm. is a type of fish cake. Um, requires a binder, like you were saying, egg yep. or common in Alaska. We okay. don't have too much salmon around right, here. Right, I can, I can understand mm -hmm. that. I haven't caught any yet anyway. We don't anyway. have catfish patties around here, I guess. We right. <laughs> alligator, maybe. But the salmon, let me tell you, salmon is full of B vitamins, mm -hmm. D vitamins, and heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids. Yep. So, and I was reading somewhere where you should eat once or twice some type of fish every mm -hmm. week. And, I, and nobody gets, I don't know anybody that gets that much fish every week. Do y'all? Uh, no. No. I, I think don't. we get enough chicken every week. Yeah, well, I mean, you, <laughs> catfish. <maybe>. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Yep. Um, let me check your grease. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm going to add some lemon juice. And this is just going to kind of give it a little bit of a brightness. And this is one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm going to slide that in there and incorporate that. So you in. actually, the rest of them is the onions. Mm -hmm. And we got some parsley. We have some parsley. Mm -hmm. And this is just a grated onion. You know, when you're eating a patty like this, you don't want to get a big chunk right. of onion. Or so that's the last grated thing you want. Down. You don't really want to feel the onion. You just want the flavor. Right, exactly. So we're going to incorporate that in. And then we have some parsley. And this parsley has been washed. And it looks very fresh. So I'd save a little Smells bit of that good. one. Yeah, we're not going to go with all this parsley. Ah, this is going to be it would mostly be for... Yeah, that'd be more like a... Parsley you, cakes. Well, you could serve it on, you know, St. Patrick's Day if you want ah, to. Ah, ah, so we're just going to get a little Since color. Mardi Gras here is... Well, oh, well we should have put purple in you. Should have. Would have been all right. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to make it a little colorful. Let me tell you something cool about salmon. Okay. Salmon, it actually a Latin word means to leap. So salmon's always jumping out of the water. Stream, right. They are, they're hatched in fresh water, okay? Okay. Then they go back to the ocean, and then mm -hmm. they come back to fresh water to reproduce. Okay. Which uh, we don't know a lot about salmon. Um, my grandma mm -hmm. used to make a salmon loaf. It's kind of where this comes from. Mm-hmm. All right. You ready? All right. Once we get, get it going here. On. I might add a little salt and pepper. Yeah, no, I'd say a, a little bit. Just a touch. Salmon don't come with salt and pepper. You got to add some. I oh, know. They love sodium. They are. Well, it's all that omega. Yeah. 
We got to unhealth it a little bit, you know. Um, I'd say caging it up. Slightly. So I'm just going to divide this into four. And then I'm going to make the patties about the size of my palm. And um, you don't really need to worry so much about cooking the meat because the meat's already cooked. So you just kind of want to get a little color on it. So make it just a little bit bigger. I'm and then trying we're to get you to 356. Will you just let me know when you're there? <laughs> I'm right there. Oh, okay. No, I'm right. I'm right close to there. Oh, okay. Well then, <laughs> just let me know. We got to get some In the meantime, flour. I'm gonna get some. I must just make a couple more here, and then we're gonna dip it in the flour, which is that's an optional, but that's gonna give it a little bit more crunch. Dipping it in the flour, because you know we gotta bread everything. That's the that's the way we do well, it. That's how we do it. Do you so, want me to pour some flour on here? I would love it if you would do that for me, please. I'll get flour everywhere. I'll have it in my ears when I get <laughs> that close to flour. Boy, that looks good, though, mm -hmm. I gotta say. Yeah, they do, they do, and that one's gonna be a little bit smaller, but that's all right. And look how pretty that parsley, Yeah, uh, y'all can see. It's... I didn't think you need 400 pounds of it, but a recipe of... Um... <laughs> Let me check your grease. I think you all, all right, but ready to go. Good. All right, so I'm going to just kind of dip a little bit, and the flour is going to stick because this is pretty wet. You can bring it on when you're ready. Okay. I'll hold it as you all get right. going. We're a little bit high, but that's okay. It shouldn't. Okay. Like I said, Look we just want to get a little. Pretty good. Yeah. So give it a minute or two, and then if you don't mind, you can flip for me. I surely will. Right. I'll tell you what we'll do. We get kinda... I'll tell you what, you get them in there, mm -hmm. we're going to fry them, and y'all, we got something cool next. We got cheesecake and king cake, and we fixing the rock. So y'all hang on. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Crawfish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes. And the return boil in under two minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories, like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all. We finally made it to the best part, the dessert. And I got to introduce a good friend of mine, Mr. Jeff Bourgeois. How's it going? How you doing, my man? Doing good. Doing good. My chef here, Kara. Kara, hey, nice doing? to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, I'm going to let you take it over. This is our super easy cheesecake. Yep, so this one is super easy. Um, normally, when you think about cheesecake, cheesecake can be kind of finicky. It can be kind of bougie. And it, um, you know, a lot of people want to cook it in a water bath and all of this stuff. Well, I don't have time for that. So mm -hmm. I just am going to make this just very super easy cheesecake. It is a cooked cheesecake, but it doesn't require all the, the bougie So this is a non-bougie. I'm digging kinda it. Kind of to that look. I'm digging it. Right? Oh, yeah. So I got two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese and it's at room temperature. And that's really important. You do want it at room temperature because it will not mix. Cream cheese is very, very thick. So um, room temperature makes it much easier to mix. And to that, I'm going to add, this is two thirds cup of white sugar. White sugar. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to slide that in there. And you can see how it's much easier to, to work with because I, it's, it's well, room I could temp. imagine if it's 
in the refrigerator. Oh, you know, yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare. And, and microwaving, it's not much better because it pops. Oh. Yes. And that aluminum ball around it ain't good, too. That's probably not going to help. No, <laughs> that probably wouldn't. That wouldn't be too good. That wouldn't be good at all. <laughs> so, so, mm -hmm. when, so, I got it. Now, now, how long are you stirring there? Are, um, I'm just going to kind of like get it broken down just a little bit, and then I'm going to add my eggs, and then I have a teaspoon of vanilla. And these eggs are room temperature as well. I don't know why. That you just going to that's a baker. Just going to roll with it. I guess I'm not really baker, but we're going we're going to roll with it. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And then after you get all those, mm -hmm. you go into yep, the crust we're going to go into the crust so i'm going to and i'm going to whip it with the beater because i do want to break down um the cheese the cream cheese until it's smooth you don't want a lot of chunks of cream cheese floating around it, even though it will melt now but you're just gonna, gonna have to bake this one i am i'm gonna bake this one so i'm just going to kind of break down this a little bit and then i'm going to go in with that beater gotcha gotcha yep. while you're doing that though mm -hmm. i gotta talk to jeff and I've been knowing this fella for a long time, bro. We go back to the 1900s. <laughs> we um, worked together at Piggly Wiggly back in the old timey days, bro. And um, you actually, and me also, going on to other stores and other grocery stores, oh, and yeah. life moved on. We got kids and a bunch of stuff done happen. We got grandkids, might even have grandkids we don't even know, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious now that's a whole other show now what brought you back to the 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 king cake business that's uncle bears and you have a partner yeah johnny Carr. okay which got his name nickname bo bo yeah now let, tell me a little bit about a king cake this is um we have the chantilly chantilly okay and we have a strawberry strawberry cream cheese and uh traditional uh cinnamon okay okay now the coolest thing about this jeff is you're not somewhere where they're sitting on a shelf if somebody wants these king cakes they just call you up call me up give me a day or two notice and you'll have it next day i'm gonna say the number right now even though we're gonna put it on the bottom of the yeah. screen it's 225 409-7030. Yeah. Now, you were telling me, even when Mardi Gras season's over, you're still going to be making cakes. Yeah. It, yeah. Pretty much we say we uh, specialty cakes. We'll make it, uh, we, we made uh, Joe Barrel's number. No way. Painted it orange and black. Mm -hmm. Sold about uh, 30 of them. Wow. Uh, wow. Whatever filling they wanted. If they didn't want no fillings, we didn't put none. Gotcha. Know? So after the season, if they're having a party, if they're having gatherings, and, and you were telling me a little bit about shipping, and, and we laughed about this. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Because you did a two-day, one-day. A one-day to my son in Chicago. And that wasn't cost-effective. It cost me about $175. Oh, my God. And then your partner sent the cheese, the king cakes to a friend by postal, yeah. and it was only two days. Two days and um, under twenty dollars. Yeah, I can so wait two days want, for that you much want money. Ship a king cake. <laughs> use your Finley uh, postal. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, y'all doing other things too? I mean, y'all y'all doing some other stuff, or is, is strictly king cakes? Well, right now it's uh, strictly king cakes, and uh, we gonna uh, we gonna try to get into the, uh, making boudin king cakes. Oh wow! Uh, doing some cinnamon, little cinnamon rolls, and what have you, uh, you know, just really it's kind of being like a, a retirement job in about seven years that where I could do it at my house. Yes, indeed. You know, because we don't want, once I retire, I don't want to just lay around, you know. Exactly. Everybody yeah. goes back to work and they retire anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so when I get home in the evening after four, I, if I got cakes, I'll, I'll deliver them. Or if you got to wake up in the morning I'll and cook them too. The morning, yeah, I'll do that too. <laughs> now tell me about what's in the Chantilly. The Chantilly right now, I got, uh, you can put any, pretty much any kind you would like. I got uh, apple, cherry. Um, peanut butter. Peanut butter, I put mm. peanut butter in it. Uh, I got uh, Bavarian. I got lemon. What? I don't, know, I don't sell too many lemons, but believe me, when you put lemon in this cinnamon log, it tastes like a lemon cake yes, that your mama indeed. used to make. Yes, uh, indeed. Bavarian, I got raspberry, we got chocolate, we got Mississippi mud. 
Wow. Anything you can think of, wow. we can do it. Uh, we in. I'm in. I'm going to order one now, too. But uh, yeah. we're going to have the number on the bottom of the screen so y'all can order from Uncle Bear. Now, Kara? Um, so all I've done is I just, it was that easy. I've mixed it up. I mixed all the ingredients in. I went ahead and uh, I mixed it with my hand mixer. You don't want to over mix because you don't want to put too much air in it because it, it tends to crack when you do that. And I'm putting it on just a little uh, baking sheet because it's going to keep the bottom from scorching. So you're going to put this in for 20 minutes at 350 and then you're going to pull it out and then you're going to take some foil and you're going to wrap around the edges or if you have one of those um, burn guards that you, I mean you can buy those at Walmart, those little burn guards you can put that in and you're going to put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes and then if you have a thermometer you want to check the inside, the middle of it um, and if it reads 165 to 170 you're golden. You're good. You don't want to overcook it because if you do it starts to get dry and kind of crumbly so having a thermometer is really handy. I'm gonna let you do a little tasting here. Oh goodness well I shouldn't have taken my glove off. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> That's all right. All right. There you go. All right if you pass me one of those plates I'll. Look at there. Brought in by the So this is Chantilly. Crowd. Chantilly. Chantilly. All That's right. Cherry it looks like. Oh, and it's different delicious. as it goes around. Yeah, this is oh, very wow. So we got to eat some from every side yeah. if you, got, you want. You got peanut butter, you got apple in there. Now, y'all did fancy stuff. She's got the cool cheesecake. Mm -hmm. You got the mm -hmm. most awesome king cake. Well, old Rodney. <laughs> got the no baked cheesecake. It was $4.99. Uh. <laughs> Bought this pie crust, dumped it in there, and I think she was going to decorate a little something on it or, or throw in happy Mardi Gras or uh, uh, go, go blue or go. <laughs> go Gators. Ah, ah, go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Go Gators. We all from Santa I got that. Some a little bit older than some. I'm, a, I'm not going to. I'm going to wait off camera because I'm going to probably end up with it on me and I won't be the dog. Look, she's going with it now. I'm a, I'm side a it up here. Let's see up in the oh. front. Here she goes. It's oh, what color do you have? Looks like it's green. And it, 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 it's coming out the top. It's coming. It's coming. All right, y'all. I'm going to tell y'all what. Y'all going to make a million dollars off of these things because everybody that's been getting it has been telling me it's, it's rocking. And your history and what you've learned throughout the years yes. to make a better cake yeah. is um, what people really like. Yeah. Kara's going to keep making this. Y'all, we'll see you next week. Next year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> next Mardi Gras, I'm still going to be doing this. Still doing it. <laughs> hey, I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we'll see you next week. Yeah.